Hello everybody, Shauna from Style Stationing Design. Welcome back. <laughs> so today, surprise DIY, something super duper easy, uh, just in time for fall and interchangeable to create all sorts of a collection and very inexpensive and very easy. So let's get to it. We are making embroidery hoop pumpkins today. Come join me. Okay, what are you gonna need for this project? Most importantly, embroidery hoops. I purchased these from the dollar store, although not all dollar stores have them. Uh, various sizes, as many as you can get, um, with the idea of looking at a collection or set and what sizes you want for different things. So keep those in mind. These, I believe the smallest one was about $2, and then the largest, which you don't see here, but you will later, um, I think was $3.50 maximum. So it gives you an idea of the cost of those. What else are you gonna need? You're gonna need some fabrics. So I really like to mix my fabrics up um, to make collections and keep them really low cost. So thrift stores, dollar stores, um, things like that. Old clothing that you're no longer using, keep those things in mind. Uh, put them in your craft pile, those types of things. Ask friends whatever you need. One idea for this one that we're gonna use is lace. So this is a super um, option for, I'm always looking for things to do with, um, to make memorable, right? To use what you have already, uh, like a wedding dress, maybe you have a wedding dress from your wedding, maybe your mother's, your grandmother's, great grandmother's. This is a great opportunity to um, use those items encapsulate them and recreate them into something that you're going to use um, hopefully every fall. Okay, let's get started. So you need embroidery hoops, you're going to need fabrics, uh, as many as you like. What else do you need? I love doilies, so I added some doilies to mine. I needed some toppers for my pumpkin, so I'm looking at low, low cost using a brown paper bag or um, just brown paper roll that I had kicking around also from the dollar store and these super cuties I don't know if you can see these are really really tiny little garlands um, plastic I'm guessing uh, I found these also at the dollar store for a dollar fifty haven't seen them a lot since because I would love to buy more um, so if you find them great crafting idea a little bit of garland you can also use Spanish moss any kind of moss um, you like to create the same idea Okay, so here's some of the fabrics that I use. This is one from the dollar store that I've seen almost year round. Um, the back looks like this, it comes in a roll. I think the roll was $4. Then I also purchased from the dollar store, this is a drop sheet uh, for, in the painting section that I um, coffee stained just to have a little bit of a aged look to it. So that is in one of my um, creations as well. And then like I mentioned, the lace. So not memorable to me, it was somebody's memorable item from the thrift store that I picked up and have been using in a lot of craft items. So make sure you keep those around as well. Okay, let's get into it. So we'll pull these away for now so that we can work in simplicity. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the smallest one. Um, so that we can be super quick on time. I can show you something effective and then I can show you the other things that I created before I came on for use of time. Okay, let's get started. So if you've never used one of these, there's actually two in one. So this little top piece, you just simply unscrew it and that will expand the outer piece and release the inner piece. So now you can see you have two pieces, the inside and the outside. So. I don't recommend taking it all the way off because they can be a bit finicky <laughs> to get back on. Um, so just open it as wide as you can. And then this is the piece that you're gonna put the fabric around. So you're gonna find the piece of your fabric that you want to highlight or put in the space you have. I want this little guy at the bottom because he's going to match something I've already made. Um, and so I'm just putting it slightly over the outer edge of the circle. You're gonna bring your top or outer circle over top of that one and just simply push it down. So sometimes you have to finagle with it a little bit. I don't think I opened it enough. Let me 
maybe to get this all in there. So we'll just unscrew it a little bit more, push it around, make sure you've got the top in line with the where you want the top, and I don't, so I'm going to redo this ever so quickly here. Line it up, push it down, and then all you have to do is screw it back in. So I kind of like to pull mine in together as I squeeze it and turn. And you just keep turning until you can't turn anymore. <laughs> it will be snug, 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 which is what you want, as snug as possible. Even though they're a little tough on the fingers, these guys. Um, but you could always use some pliers to help you with this as well. Okay, so then when you get it as snug as you like, the key to these is to go at the back and push the inner ring forward. So I'm just gonna push it forward so that kind of pops the front out a little bit. So it just gives that presentation piece. Um, and then all you, you have to do is cut away the back. So let's do that really quick. Or as quick as I can anyways. <laughs> For sake of time. Because we do wanna see the finished product. So I'm just cutting right up against the wood. Um, and one thing I didn't mention is that Probably a first step that I would do. I'm going to be reusing these hoops, so I'm not doing a lot of permanent C to them. But one of the things you could do is, and I probably would do if these were going to be permanent, is stain them first. So staining the outside wood into a natural wood or maybe a couple of different stains that you like um, to create your collection or your pieces and some fluidity to them. Just makes that extra kind of finished look to it. So I'm just kind of pulling the fabric away as I'm cutting, not really being that careful or gentle, which is what I love about crafts. <laughs> you don't have to be too delicate about it. And a second here, I'll show you the finished product. So I could have done a little bit of a neater job, but for sake of moving forward, here's what we're left with. So get yourself a little circle of goodness, <laughs> however you want it. Now we're gonna add some pieces to make it look a little bit more like a pumpkin. Okay, so as I mentioned, I love doilies. Um, these I think were from Amazon, a set from Amazon, but the best place to get them is the thrift store. Some lovely has talent and knitted these and um, sent them into the thrift store for people like us. <laughs> So I've just tucked it right over top. I don't know if you can see that. I've tucked it into that top little screw. Um, if you want, you can get some fabric glue and glue it right down. If it's gonna be permanent, I would highly recommend that. Mine's not gonna be permanent, so I will be taking this off at some point. So I'm gonna put the least amount of glue. So you can see it's starting to kind of represent a pumpkin, hopefully. We just need a stem. <laughs> And the stem, believe it or not, I mean, of all this easiness, the stem is the actual easiest part. So, like I said, parchment, um, paper bag, whatever you have around the house. I don't want the straight edge, so uh, really ripping it was what I did. And then, super duper easy, just crumple it up. We want it to look like an aged old stem. <laughs> so I'm kind of crumpling it up. I'm looking for the edge that might look the nicest a kind of scallopy look. And then I'm just kind of starting to create it. So looking at squeezing it together, pulling some pieces in. I don't want it too, too big, but I do want a top um, that can come. Oops. Just realizing I want it actually to, the stem to come this way. So now I'm recreating what I can with that. This will be the bottom piece. And you want a stem. Bear with me here. So we're just going to kind of take it, squish it all up, turn it and squish it as best we can to create a stem. And you'll start, so you'll start to see it form uh, before your eyes as you're starting to panic. <laughs> if that makes any sense. As you're like, how does this work? I don't know what I'm doing. Um, then it, yeah, you start to you start to kind of see it and go, oh, okay, I can twist this this way, I can fold that that way, and kind of create the look that I want or I'm going for or want an idea towards um, as you go. 
and you can always undo things if you don't like them. <laughs> Rip it up and start over, recycle it. Move on, right? So, okay, once you have kind of a, a look you sort of want, this doesn't look like much, <laughs> but you can kind of see this is the bottom and here's the stem here. Let's bring them together and see what it's gonna look like on there. So now you cannot see my doily, so this is too big. All I'm gonna do is take this same shape that I have and start to pull away part of the paper. Too big, too much, I don't want all of that. Let's try it again. Squish it down, add it to the top. Still a bit big for my liking. So I wanna be able to see the doily there, but more of it than you can see now. So I'm really just gonna rip this down. It looks like I'm ripping it away to nothing, actually, but I guess that's closer to what I want, seeing as I haven't quite got there yet. So let's have a look. Let's see what this looks like. It doesn't look amazing, but I know that the finishing product will. So I'm gonna go with this. So at this point, you're gonna want your glue. I'm gonna go with some hot glue um, and just add a little hot glue underneath right on here. Add this on top and then add a couple of hot glue pieces to keep this folded. So let's see if my hot glue will reach and I can show you this. Okay, so far so good. So just a couple of squeezes on the top there. I don't even have to wear my protectors my finger protectors for this because it should be all inside there. Okay, a couple little holds to make sure it stays. And then I'm gonna start to put a few dabs in here just to keep this shape looking like a stem. As much of a stem as I can get anyways. And maybe what I'll do is put a little glue in the back to hold it. Add a glue stick. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Nope, I can't. Let's try two. Much easier. Okay. So let's add a little dab down here so we can get it to fold and stay folded. Add a dab in here. Just kind of wherever you think will help you achieve or maintain the shape that you want once you've got it to go in there. And then of course, the thing about hot glue is you always have the little <laughs> stragglers um, holding on for dear life that sometimes you don't see till years later. So I like to get them right away because it's embarrassing to find them years later, especially if you made it yourself. Okay, so we've got the glue going on there. I'm gonna tuck this little guy under. He doesn't seem to want to be behaving so much. And maybe I'll do a little twist right here, just for fun. Sometimes you have to go worth where the craft is going. <laughs> Follow the vibe. And for the most part, it usually works out. Okay, let's get that out of there. So now you can see you've got yourself a cute little funky pumpkin. <laughs> and let's add some greenery. The greenery is always the kind of the icing on the cake or the, the icing flower maybe that everyone wanted when you were a kid. <laughs> Just adds that little pop of interest and color to it, brings it to life even though this is not real <laughs> or that real looking, but um, just kind of adds a little something. So cut off a piece of that, throw these over here and Clean off my station a little bit here. Okay, so with this, I'm just going to fluff it up a little bit so you can actually see some of the ivy, I think it is supposed to be. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna come around and see how, see how she goes. See how it's lying and see how I want it to look. Maybe a curly cue up or a cute curly cue over and it in certain spots and see kind of how it lands. Actually, I'm going to put this on. Sorry, just for a second, I'm gonna not show you so I can see what I'm up to so that I can 
show you when it's looking a little nicer. Okay, happy enough. So there is our first little pumpkin. I would like this to look a little bit more turned. So maybe I'll give it a little extra squish. Oh, I see my glue didn't stick. That's what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna get a little extra glue in here. Bear with me one second. That was a lot of extra glue, but I didn't wanna have my back to you. So I'm just trying to squish it, ouch. I spoke too soon on the, ow. Burning my finger. <laughs> Apparently you might need protectors for this job. Ow, especially if you're in a hurry. Okay, so minus one burnt finger, here we are. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you um, the varieties that I've done and then in the end photo, I will show you the collection, how it looks all together. So this is the mini, as you can see, so it has lace, doily, uh, brown paper bag, stem, and the greenery on there. I'll leave her down here. Here is a big one that I did. I wanted to show you this one because it actually has a pocket in it. So with the big one, what I did was, I'll turn it around so you can see the main piece. The main piece is the drop sheet that I um, copy stained to look a little bit more rustic. That was a piece I threw over the whole, whole hoop. Then on top of that one, I just draped the lace. As you can see, it's not even attached, but if I was going to keep this as a permanent fixture, I would put some fabric glue on there. And then this piece is the fabric that I had folded over. So as you can see, there's a fold here to get the straight line across. And this creates a bit of a pocket. So if you want to add something to it, you can add a little sprout or sprig just to add a little something to it. I don't think it needs it personally, but I love the option of a little pocket because I can change things out. I can put some hang tags in there. Um, just, just versatile, something different, right? Okay, so there's the big one. There's the small one. I'm gonna take this out so you can see them all together. Here is a medium, and as you can tell, it matches the small. So this is the big piece of lace, and the smaller one is just the smaller version, so very similar. And that's kind of how they look like a set, by doing similar things in different sizes. Okay, so I have one more size. Actually, I actually had two of one more size. And this was the one I started with. So I just started with this fabric that I found from the dollar store, very, very easy. This one probably took me, oh, it was under five minutes for sure. <laughs> and that's with some finagling and, you know, the first time you're always a little bit longer and pickier than the other times once you, once you get it, right? So this is uh, the first one. I did put out a little hand tag just so you can see all the variations. Um, all the doilies are different. The tops are all uh, brown paper. So another piece to the set. And then as a variation of that, I also wanted to make it just a little bit more interesting. So what I did was take the same material as this one, laid it out, and then on top of the material, I laid down a bunch of different, I don't know if you can see them there, lace and ribbons to kind of look like the lines of the pumpkin. They're not perfectly straight. <laughs> it's kind of how crafting works, right? Nothing's absolutely perfect. You, I do want people to know that I made it. <laughs> it's not store-bought, but close, right? So then you can see a family. Kind of a variation of all different ones that fit together in some way, or similar in some way. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is super fast, easy, cost cost effective and really anyone can do it other than the burned finger <laughs> it was very very easy and very very fast so i hope you enjoyed this share with me your creations and i will make sure to take a picture of the group the family together and post it at the end take care and have a great day shauna from style staging and design bye for now